Hey guys, I literally just got a mosquito bite on my head. There's a mosquito in here and it just bit the fuck out of my forehead. Like, why are you still alive? Like, die, bitch. Die. Why are you? Why? Why? Anyways, so what's up? Uh, this is going to be a semi-review video on um, the Maze Runner. Scorch Trials, which if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I saw that um, last weekend, September. It came out September 18th. I saw it Saturday, I want to say September 25th, so it's out now. Please go see it. Please go support it. It's a great, 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 great movie. Um, I'm not going to fully like go in depth with it like I did with um Daredevil and stuff like that because I don't want to ruin it um I don't want to have spoilers this is not going to be a spoiler review because it's still out and I want you guys to go see it but this is going to be a review kind of of just the things that I love about um this series the Maze Runner Scorch Trials is the second movie installment in the Maze Runner series which is based off of a book um, a book series. I believe it's a trilogy. I have not read the books, but after seeing the movies, I really want to read the books because the movies are really, 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 really good. I was like raving about the movie on Twitter. Um, like I was saying, if you follow me on Twitter, my forehead really itches, guys. The mosquito just bit me. I'm trying not to scratch, but the mosquito just bit me. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you saw me like raving about the movie after we saw it. The first Maze Runner movie, which is just called The Maze Runner, my husband and I did not see it in the theater. Um, we actually watched it on, like, you know, I don't know if you know, but, like, Apple TV has, like, movies that you can, like, rent or whatever. So I want to say we watched it through, like, the Apple TV, um, like, movie rental thing. And it was just, like, one of those, like, throwaway kind of, like, oh, like, this sounds good, like, let's check it out type things. Um, I knew it was based off of a book series, but I had literally no idea what it was about. It was just like a blind viewing. Maze Runner is really not one of those dystopian future series that's like hardcore pushed, like The Hunger Games, which we've all heard of, like Divergent, which was pushed even though I thought that first movie was really bad and I didn't even see the second one, even though I have all the Divergent books, I've read the books, the books are not terrible, um, but the movies are horrible, but those movies are pushed, the Hunger Games, which is like the dystopian series, you know, of this generation is really the Hunger Games, even though the books are much better than the movies. Um, the Maze Runner really hasn't gotten that much of a push. And it sucks because these Maze Runner movies are better than the Hunger Games movies. Like I 100% feel like these Maze Runner movies are better than the Hunger Games movies. And that first Hunger Games movie, I loved. Like, the first Hunger Games movie is my shit. Like, that's a movie that I could just put on and watch, like, any time. But the second one I thought was terrible. The third one I thought was terrible. This, like, last installment, I didn't even see. Um, and I have all the, again, I have all the books. The books are much, much, much better than the movies. The Hunger Games books are much better than the movies. The Hunger Games books actually have a lot of subtext about race and about class and racism and classism um, and these really um, kind of complex ideas about race and class and the media and the portrayal of people by the media. It's really a searing critique on the media. I remember reading the books like, man, she's like really getting into some deep sh like shit and none of that makes it into the movie. So I definitely would recommend the Hunger Games books if you haven't read those. So please um, go read those. And actually, FYI, just so you know, the Hunger Games movies have actually been extremely whitewashed. In the books, the main character, Katniss Everdeen, is not white. She is not described as white. She is not read as white. Um, some of the subtext of the book, the, the race subtext of the book, kind of implies that, one, the districts, I don't want to say the, the districts are split by race, but that race is a prominent factor in the districts, uh, that people of different races live in different districts. And also in um, District 13, where Katniss and Peta and Gail and all of them live, there is a class system, a caste system, really, that is divided by race. And like I said, none of this really makes it into the movies. You have to read the books. But there's a class system that's kind of divided by race where the 
POCs, the non-white people live in the seam and they're poor and those are typically the people that live in the mine and they're described as having dark skin, olive skin, dark hair, dark eyes. They're described as being people of color and how the white people live in the town, um, how they're white, they have pale skin, they have blonde hair, blue eyes. PETA is described as being a white person with blonde hair and blue eyes who's the son of a baker. His family um, makes bread and being that it's the Hunger Games, people are starving. So the fact that they make bread means that they're like way up in the society and they live in the center of the town. Meanwhile, Katniss as a dark skin, you know, olive skin, dark eyed, dark hair, a poor girl living in the scene, she's a person of color. None of that makes it into the movies. <laughs> like I said, the movies are extremely whitewashed. Um, there's some backstory about how it was a scandal when Katniss's parents got married because her father was a person of color from the, the seam with dark skin and, and dark hair and eyes and her mother was a white person from the town that her um, mother's parents were doctors and that's why her mom is um, blonde and pale with blue eyes and her sister is blonde and pale with blue eyes but she's supposed to be like like dark, like a, a person of color. Um, but again, none of that made it into the movie. So if, if you want to like kind of get more into the Hunger Games and, and the mythology and the backstory of the Hunger Games, I would definitely recommend the books. That is a big difference between the Hunger Games and Maze Runner is that apparently the Maze Runner is also a very diverse book series. And that diversity has actually made it onto the big screen with these movies. So when my husband and I sat down to watch the first Maze Runner, we were just like, oh, like we've all, we've like seen it every time we cut on Apple TV. How about we like give it a try and like watch it? So we turned it on and the story of the Maze Runner is that um, these kids wake up, they're in a cage. The cage is shooting upwards and the cage lets them out in the glade. And the glade is like a wooded area. There's like a, a open, um, like a meadow, kind of like a field. And it's surrounded by woods and they call it the glade. And these boys live there. They have no memory. They don't know who they are. They don't know where they came from. They don't know anything except their names. And, and once a month, every month, the cage comes up out of the ground and a boy, a, a new boy is in it. And they have basically set up this society it's kind of like the lord of the flies if you guys don't know the lord of the flies i will include links in the description box lord of the flies is also a book it's a classic it was also turned into a movie it was about a group of british schoolboys that um were marooned on an island maroon might not be the right word marooned is shipwreck their plane crashed <laughs> their plane crashed on an island and they end up setting up this like whole like system whatever so um in maze runner it's kind of something similar and in Maze Runner, it's a diverse cast. It's all different types of boys. There's white boys, there's black boys, there's non-black um, Hispanics, there's like Middle Eastern, um, East Indian, there's, there's all, there's Asians, there's all different kinds. And me and my husband are literally watching the movie and I swear I'm watching the movie and I'm like, an Asian kid, a black kid, an East Indian kid, a girl, because at a certain point, a girl comes up, and none of this is ruining the plot, so don't be like, hey, sir. like, that's not a twist or anything. At a certain point, a girl comes up, and that's what is kind of the catalyst for the story, for, you know, the, the, the shit that ends up happening, is that after all these months and months of nothing but boys coming up, and it's, it's just like a whole bunch of boys in the glade, one day, all of a sudden, a girl gets sent up in the, in the cage. And it has this really diverse cast. The leader of the Glade is Albie, who's black. Um, the main character is Thomas, who's white, who's a white guy, a white protagonist. But I don't really mind that because Thomas is played by Dylan O'Brien, who is Styles on Teen Wolf. And I love Teen Wolf and I love his character, so I'm willing to let it slide or whatever. But, you know, it's, it's also really, it's just cool to see such a diverse cast of people that everyone has a speaking part. All the people of color have speaking parts. They have names. We, we get to know them. We get to know who they are. The Maze Runner is really, really, really good with character development. I kind of feel like it has to be because there's not very much world building, especially in the first one. The whole, the whole thing takes place in the Glade, and they don't know how they got there, and they don't have any backstory. So you really get to know a lot about these characters, and you really 
feel this attachment to the characters. And this kind of carried over into the second Maze Runner movie, which was the movie that we saw, where you're watching the movie and you feel like you know these characters and you feel attached to them and everything that happens to them is like, no, 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 my character, my character, my character, you know, like they're like they're real people, um, which I think is awesome. So in the first, the first one, it's called The Maze Runner because so it's the glade, the meadow, which is in the middle, and then it's the forest, and then outside of the forest is a maze. So the glade is set inside of a huge maze. And every morning, a door opens, and you can go out into the maze, and every night at a certain, so every morning at a certain time, the door opens, and every night at a certain time, the door closes. So you have to be out, if you do go in the maze, you have to be out of the maze and back in the glade before the door is going to close. So basically what they, what they do is they have, they elect the fastest runners out of all the boys that come up in the cage, and they make them the maze runners, hence the title, the maze runner, and their job is basically every morning they get up, they go out into the maze. They're trying to find their way through the maze to see if there's an exit, to see if there's a way for them to get out, to get out of the maze or whatever. Um, so that's pretty much the plot. It's like very, you just like start in the middle of the story. You have no idea what's going on. And the first movie, the movie literally starts with Thomas being sent up in the cage. And you're like, whoa, like what's happening? And then the story just like unfolds for Thomas like and for you at the same time. In the Scorch Trials, it's this, it's really the same thing. You're kind of like put in the, it picks up directly where the first movie lets off and you're kind of put directly in the middle of the story. Like I said, I'm not going to get too much into the plot because it is a sequel to the first one and I don't want to ruin it for anybody because I want you guys to go see it. But all the things that I liked about the first Maze Runner were present in this movie as well. Number one being the diverse cast. The Maze Runner is a hard, first of all, it's a hard sci-fi it's way more sci-fi than um, Hunger Games. It's way more sci-fi than Divergent. Um, a lot of dystopian future, like Mad Max and stuff like that, a lot of dystopian future, you know, movies and books and storylines are not necessarily hard sci-fi. They just show you a world where, you know, the world has ended. So maybe we've, like, reverted back to, like, an agricultural way of life. Or maybe it's, like, you know, like zombies, like The Walking Dead, like... Like, The Walking Dead is, like, a dystopian future with the zombies, but it's definitely not sci-fi. Like, there's no science fiction. There's no technology present. I mean, I guess it could fall under the sci-fi category because it's speculative fiction, but, you know, it's not a hard sci-fi. The Maze Runner, as the story unfolds, it's hard sci-fi. Like, technology, like, inventions, shit you've never seen before, like... And that's my type of thing. I love sci-fi. Like, I love speculative fiction overall, but I love, like, sci-fi fantasy and, like, hard sci-fi. So if you like movies like, like, Demolition Man with Wesley Snipes and Sylvester Stallone and, and, and stuff like that, like, the dystopian future movies that air more on the side of the sci-fi than just, like, the, the war, war-torn, you know, fighting back against the government type shit, you'll probably really, really, really like Maze Runner. It's less... It, it, it does have its, like, political, like, side moments, but it's less political than, like, say, The Hunger Games, which is all about, like, politics and the media and the race and the class system. It's less than that. Um, and I think a big part of that is because of the diversity. Maze Runner is set in a world where... Well, it really is set in the world that we live in now, which is a majority brown world. And just something bad happened. And we're seeing these people react and it's a bunch of different types of people, you know, doing a bunch of different types of things, um, which I really enjoyed. The movie came on and one of the first characters that you see is this um, doctor and the doctor is a black woman. And me and my husband literally like, looked at each other like, thumbs up, like we all re we're already all in, like, you know? And there's um, another black girl that ends up being like a main character. From the first movie carried over into the second movie, you have Thomas and then your second protagonist is um Minho who is Asian East Asian I don't know they never say like specifically what his nationality is in the movie um but he's an East Asian character he talks <laughs> he, he has a speaking role he has a personality in the first movie he's the lead um maze runner he's the fastest one there Thomas actually becomes a maze runner and they like 
he's like his mentor. He's like his mentor. Um, and that's awesome. That's so awesome to see. Like, it's so awesome to see. And like the leader of the Glade is Albie, who's like a black, a black guy, like a black kid. That's so awesome to see. Like black characters actually make it into the second film. Like that is so awesome to see. There's not a lot of death in the Maze Runner. There's not a lot of like dying just to shock you or like death just for like death's sake um which I also enjoy because that seems like something a plot device that a lot of people are relying on now like death just to like shock you and we all know that nine times out of ten when you use a death kind of like I said in my daredevil review when you use a death to kind of move your story into the third act or move your plot line along nine times out of ten it's gonna be the black person or the POC um so in Maze Runner there's not a lot of that that happens um I just really feel like Maze Runner did a great job, again, in terms of the diversity, the casting is awesome, the character building is good. In this second movie, you get some more world building than in the first one, and the world building is excellent. But again, like the characterizations, I think I just saw the mosquito, y'all. I think I just saw it. Bitch. Bitch ass mosquito. But, um... The characters and just the characterizations are, are just off the chain. And the story is amazing. The story is really good. Like, the story is good. Like, I really want... And like I said, I'm watching it blind or cold or however you would say it because I have not read the books. Um, and just watching it unfold has really, really, really been a joy. It's been really a pleasure. Um, and I just can't recommend these movies enough if you like speculative fiction if you like dystopian futures if you like hard sci-fi if you like diversity if you want to see like more diversity which you probably do if you're watching this video and you're watching this channel it's not one of those white supremacist fantasies like mad max or even hunger games um really disappointed me with the casting i was never on board with the casting from the first movie up until now i was really 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 disappointed with the casting um and really watching Maze Runner is just a breath of fresh air to like see this diverse casting. I told my husband, I was like, we're spoiled. Like now that we've seen the Maze Runner, we're like literally never going to watch another one of these like white washed white supremacist fantasies ever, ever again. And someone that I follow on Twitter was actually tweeting about Mad Max. And I did want to read you guys her tweet because her tweet was really good. Um, she said... All I got from Mad Max Fury Road was this. Even after the apocalypse, white people rule the world and are the heroes. Fuck that vision. See, a lot of us feel the same way, especially those of us that enjoy speculative fiction. We enjoy dystopian, you know, fantasy and end of the world type shit. It's getting tiring seeing the same all white cast over and over because it really does send the message that the black people and the people of color do not motherfucking make it through the apocalypse. Even though right now the majority of the world on a, you know, on a world scale is brown and not white you know so it's really a slap in the face um so if you're tired of that bullshit <laughs> i definitely rec recommend excuse me i recommend maze runner check it out it should be in theater it should be in your local theater it's definitely worth the price of a movie ticket because the movie is really really good like i was like raving about it on twitter and like a lot of people were like oh i've never heard of it which is what prompted me to make this video because Maze Runner really hasn't been getting a huge promotional push. Even the first movie didn't get one. Like I said, we didn't see the first one in the theater. Um, I mean, and I could have a whole conspiracy theory about how the powers that be. You don't want these movies to be a success because they have a diverse cast. But I'm not even going to go there, right? Because then they can say, like, see, diverse cast movies don't do well. And it's like, well, but nigga, you didn't promote the fucking movie. But um, it should be in your local theater. It's definitely worth the price of a ticket. It's a great movie. Great cast, great story, great characters. I can't wait to see the next one, um, which will be the final final one in the trilogy. I think it's coming out, if not next year, 2016, then 20, 2017. Um, and I will definitely be seeing it because it was awesome. And I just really recommend it. Like I said, on my timeline, half the people were like, oh, I've never heard of that. What is that? I'll have to check it out. And the other half was like, yes, Maze Runner. I love Maze Runner. I'm obsessed. It's better than The Hunger Games. And I was like, it is better than The Fucking Hunger Games. So please check it out. It's awesome. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you've seen it, let me know what you think in the comments. Please, no spoilers. If you have seen it or if you have read the books, please, no spoilers. Because I haven't read the books. I don't know how it's going to end. And um, for people that haven't seen the movies or haven't read the books, please, no spoilers. So, um, food for thought as always. See you guys next time. Peace.